Hi guys, welcome back. So today I've got another tutorial for you here where we're going to be creating this um, kind of infinite scrolling menu. You can see we never reach the end and we can also scroll up and it will always just reset. Okay, so in order to achieve this, we have uh, five uh, item links and what we've done is basically just created clone elements, okay? And then whenever we reach the bottom um, of our menu, it'll always just readjust to the top when we reach the top of our menu, it will always adjust the scroll position to the bottom. Okay, so we get this kind of infinite loop effect. Um, it's also mobile uh, works on mobile devices as well. So, for example, we just get the iPhone 10 here. You can see we get the same effect on an uh, on an iPhone as well. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoy, guys, and let's get going. Thanks. Okay, guys. So as always, we have the three usual files: index.html our style.css and our app.js files. Um, if you come to our index.html, get a boilerplate up and running. And then in the title, we'll just say uh, infinite scroll for now. Okay. And then next thing we want to do is come into our header and we'll just link to our style.css file like so. And then in the body, we'll just do the script source tag and we'll just say app.js like so. Okay, and now in the body, coming above that, we're just going to say nav dot menu. Okay, dot, I'll give it a class of menu. So that's our nav element. And then in this nav, we're going to say um, another div of a class of menu item. And then within this div, we're going to say dot menu item inner. Actually, that should be an anchor tag. Let me just uh, redo that. Say a dot menu hyphen item hyphen inner. Okay. And then in this anchor tag, we're just going to create our first link, which is going to be home. And now I'm going to copy this menu item div down four more times. I want five links here. And the second link, we'll just say about. The third link, we'll just say um, projects. Fourth link, we'll say blog. And then the fifth link, we'll say uh, contact. Okay, that's nearly it for our HTML. Um, all I want to do now is just open this in the live server so you can see our links there. Um, I want to get the Poppins font from Google. Uh, so we'll just type in Poppins. Okay, and then yeah, we'll take this font here. I'm going to use the light version for this project. We'll copy the link tag and we'll paste that in our header section as well. Like so. And that's it for our HTML, guys. So now if we come into our style.css, um, I'm just going to get the um, global settings, so we'll say star, we'll say margin zero, padding zero, and box sizing, border box. Okay, and then I just want to get that CSS selector from the Google Fonts website as well. Just copy that and we'll paste that in the global settings in our CSS file. Okay, so when I save that, you can see now we get that nice light poppins font. Right, kind of underneath this, next thing you want to select is our HTML and body elements. So we'll say HTML, comma, body. And then in here, I'm just going to give this a height of 100%. And we'll give this a width of 100 viewport widths, VW, like so. And then I also want to say overflow. And we'll say, um, that should be auto, that should be hidden. Okay, and then I just want to change the background to a dark grey. So we'll say background color, hashtag 161616. And that gives us this nice dark grey background. Okay, so now kind of underneath this uh, section, we'll say dot menu to get our nav element. And we'll say position relative. And then underneath that, we'll say height. And I want to fill this um, vertically, so we'll say 100%. And I'll just say a width of 100% as well to fill it horizontally. And then we'll say overflow auto here because we want to scroll on this element, okay? And then the next thing we want to do here is I'm just going to say hyphen. That should be one hyphen. WebKit. And we'll say overflow scrolling. And that will be a touch. And this is just to allow us to use this on mobile devices. Okay, so the next thing we want to do underneath this is we're going to say dot menu item to get all of our individual menu items. And here I'm just going to say position relative. And then underneath this, we'll just say um, a height of 20%. Okay, 
as you've got five elements, so 100% divided by five is 20%. So that's why I'm using the 20% here for these. And that's important for this effect to work, okay? Um, so underneath that, we're going to select our A tag. I'm just going to adjust the font size to 30 pixels to make the text a bit bigger. And then we'll say underneath this, um, position absolute. And then underneath this, we'll say top of 50% just to center these to their parent divs. And then we'll say transform. And we want to translate on the Y axis minus 50% just to make them uh, perfectly centered. And then kind of underneath this, we'll say left of 10% as well, just to give them a bit of, just to give the links a bit of white space to the left. And then underneath that, we'll just say color white. And then we'll say text decoration of none to remove the underline and I think we'll just give it a bit of letter spacing as well so we'll say letter spacing of two pixels okay and then underneath this I just also want to add um, a hover effect so we'll say a colon hover and here I'm just going to set the opacity to 0 0.6 just to make it see through slightly when we hover okay like so Okay, so that's pretty much it for now for our um, in, uh, HTML and CSS. So now let's get the effect working, this infinite scroll with our JavaScript, okay? So we've come to our app.js file. We'll do our selectors first. So I'll just say um, let menu. And here we're going to say equals document dot query selector. And we're just going to say dot menu like so. Underneath this, we'll get our menu items. So we'll say let menu or just let items equal document dot query selector all. And here we'll just say dot menu hyphen item. Okay. <clears throat> now underneath that, we're just going to say let clones equal an empty array. And we're going to clone each of our menu items to make this effect work. Okay. So we just set that as an empty array for now. Underneath this, we'll set a variable called disable scroll. And that's going to equal false. And then underneath this, we're just going to say let scroll height. And that's going to equal zero for now. Just adjust that to zero, equal zero. And then let's scroll pos for position equal zero as well. And then underneath this, we'll just say let um, clones height equal zero. And we'll adjust this later with a function. So the first function we're going to set is uh, called get scroll, uh, get, get scroll pos for position. And here that's just going to return our menu um, dot scroll top like so okay and what the scroll top does that just gets the amount of or the amount of pixels we've scrolled by okay so the amount window scrolled um and then i'll just say function and here we're going to say um set scroll pos so set scroll position and that's going to take in a position argument so we'll just say pos there like so and here we we'll just say menu uh dot scroll um pos scroll top sorry equals pos like so okay and then underneath this we're going to say a function called uh, get clones height so say function get clones height like so and within this function we're just going to say clones height equals zero okay and then we're going to then loop through our clones array we instantiate at the top so say clones dot for each and then we're passing each individual clone into a callback and here we're just going to say clones height and we're going to add so we we'll say clones height plus equals we're going to add the clone that we pass in so we we'll say clone dot offset height okay and what the offset height is is that is just the uh, height of each of the individual clones that we pass in so it will give the height in pixels, okay? So I'll just comment here, returns height of element, and that's in pixels. So we're just basically adding each of our clone elements height to that clone's height variable, okay? And then what we want to do after this is we're just going to return that clone's height variable. So say return clone's height, like so. Okay, so that's our get clone's height function. Now underneath this, we're going to create another function, and this is going to be called recalc. And what this does is this will just uh, resize the dimensions for all of our elements when we resize the page, okay? So I'll just comment this. I'll just say recalculates um, dimensions when a screen 
is resized like so. Okay, and then within this function, first thing we want to do here is we'll say scroll pos, and that's going to equal get scroll pos, that function. And then we'll say scroll height, and that's going to equal the menu dot scroll height. Like so. Okay. And the scroll height just gets the actual height of the menu element, okay? So it return the actual height, including the part of the element that's not visible to the screen, okay? So it gets the full height in pixels. So just comment that for you here. Okay, and then underneath that, we're just going to say um, clones height equals get clones height. And that with that function we created above. Okay, and then underneath this, the final part for the recap function, we're just going to say if, we're going to say um, scroll pos um, is less than or equal to zero, then we want to say um, set scroll pos and we're going to pass in one pixel. And the reason we're doing this is it will allow us to scroll upwards, okay, when we um, open the page. Because obviously, when this setting, uh, this effect, we want it to, when we get to the top of the page, we want it to move back down to the bottom of our menu to make this effect work. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Okay, so I'll just comment here initial, uh, initially set to one pixel to enable upward scrolling. Okay. Now, kind of underneath this, next thing we want to do is I'm just going to say function. And here we'll say scroll update. Okay. So this is basically the, like, the kind of animation update for our scroll. And in here, we're going to do an if statement. We're going to say if not disabled scroll. And then I'm saying not with that exclamation mark beforehand. We'll say in here, scroll pos equals um, get scroll pos, like so. And then so we get in the current scroll position. And then we'll say if clones height plus uh, scroll height or scroll pos, sorry, is greater than or equal to the scroll height, then we're going to say um, set scroll pos. So I'm just going to comment here. We'll say we want to scroll back to the top when we reach the bottom of our page, okay? So that's what we're saying here. If the clone's height plus the scroll position is greater than the actual menu height, so then we'll set the scroll position to one to bring it back to the top of the uh, menu, okay? And then we'll set that dis uh, disable scroll variable to true. Then I'm going to say, we also want to do, if, if we reach the uh, top of the page, okay, we want to go to the bottom. So we'll say, else if, yes, yeah, so we want to go to the bottom and reach the top. So we'll say, if scroll pos is uh, less than or equal to zero, then we'll um, just add a comment here as well. We'll just say, um, scroll to bottom when we reach the top. Okay, and here we'll just say set scroll pos. And here we want to say um, scroll pos, scroll position, scroll height, sorry, uh, plus or minus clones height. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And that will take us to the um, bottom of the menu. And then we'll set the disable scroll to true again. Okay, and then coming out of that main if statement, we're just going to say if if disable scroll and then we just want to reset this okay and what this does we're just using this disable scroll variable just to avoid this kind of flickering effect that occurs if you don't um, reset this so I'm just going to say disable scroll jumping for a short period of time to avoid a flickering uh, effect okay and then within this we'll just say here uh, window dot set timeout, and I'm just going to say uh, disable scroll equals false, and then I'll just set that to 40 milliseconds. This timeout function, and that's it for our scroll update function. Uh, we're nearly there, guys. So we've got one more kind of function to do after this, and that's our onload function. So just say function onload, and here. We're just going to, this is what the function is going to trigger when, once the page is loaded, okay? So first we want to do is get all of our items, and we're going to say for each item, 
going to pass in the item and we want to clone our, our items okay so we say const clone equals item dot clone node and we're going to say true okay you can see that means deep is true so that means we clone all uh, inner elements of the uh, item as well and then we're going to append these clones to our menu so say menu dot append child clone and I'm going to say clone dot class list dot add I'll just say dot or just js hyphen clone like so okay so now we have our clones and that makes the effect work and then we're going to say clones equals uh, menu dot query select to all and then we'll just select our js clone elements okay dot js clone like so and then underneath this we're going to say recalc just to set the dimensions of all the elements when we load our page trigger that function and then I'm going to add an event listener to our menu next the scroll event and what this is going to do is going to um, trigger this function and we're going to say window uh, dot request animation frame and here I'm just going to say scroll update like so and it trigger that scroll update function okay and then I'll just put false here as well that should be false okay because we're not passing any options into this event listener okay and then underneath that we just add another event listener to the um, men to the window next and here we just say resize so when we resize the page we just want to uh, do a callback function here and I'll say window dot request animation frame again and that's going to trigger the recalc function over and over again okay and then again passing false because we're not having any options with this okay and now if we say window dot onload equals onload function our effect should now work as you can see when we scroll now uh, when we get to the bottom it resets so we get this kind of infinite scroll effect and vice versa when we scroll up as well so it'll always be infinitely scrolling uh, to make this effect look better i just want to hide our scroll bar okay so in order to do that i'm just going to come into our css and we'll just say just do a comment here hide scroll bar what's it doing okay comment that up and then in here we'll just say um oh, i'll just do an all selector again for now should put this at the top really i'll just do it in here i'll just say scroll uh, scroll bar and we'll just say hyphen width equals uh, none and then we also want to account for other browsers as well so we'll just say a star colon colon hyphen webkit scroll bar and here we'll just say display none okay so now you can see we don't have a scroll bar so then that makes this effect a bit better so now you can see we get this kind of infinite scrolling effect okay and you'll see here as well so if we open up our dev tools you can see all the, the actual clones we've created so we've cloned all the links and we just created those other we've just placed them underneath our main uh, anchor tags just to make it look like it's a constantly scrolling effect okay guys so i hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video cheers